Hello, I'm Murray Evans from uh, the University of Bath at the, uh, the new camera centre we've got. And I've come to talk to you about our work in uh, foot contact time and step length estimation. So it's kind of fundamentally self-evident that if you're running the, the, the fundamental statistics of how fast you can run is based on how quickly you can move your feet and how large each of your steps is. Uh, so a, a brilliant example of this is the difference between Usain Bolt and Johan Blake. They're both elite class sprinters, but one of them can do 100 meters in 41 steps, one of them does in 46 steps. And the question is, what's actually best for any particular runner and that sort of thing. So it, coaches and training staff, they like to be able to record this information and make, uh, um, make measurements throughout training sessions, find out what's best for their athletes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, currently, you can do this through manual annotation, which nobody really wants to do. Um, or they can make use of force plates embedded in the floor, but obviously force plates are expensive and you can, it's very, very few places in the world that actually have more than one or two meters worth of force plates in any one place. And obviously if you're trying to measure a large number of steps, you want a much larger area to measure through. Uh, step length can be done through optical marker-based motion capture, but again, the marker-based systems have markers which the athletes don't like and you're often compelled to, to again, a few smaller number of places. So our aim is to sort of uh, develop a system that can do this with um, a multi-camera system. So we chose a multi-camera system because it tends to be quite robust. Um, there are single camera approaches to doing this, but we found that multi-cameras is, is much more robust and is gonna give us the sort of precision that we actually want to get to. So the first stage of our processing just is standard background subtraction. Uh, we then feed into a multi-camera processing stage which allows us to estimate approximately when each foot contact happens and allows us to get an approximate localization of each foot and then a precise location of each foot and then we go further into a, back to single cameras to try and get an absolute the most precise timing that we can possibly get for each foot landing on the ground um, this is sort of an example of sort of the minimalist approach to our system for the arrangement of the cameras um, the idea of this is that we can kind of add to the central triangle of cameras and extend it out to have as long a corridor that the runners need to be able to run through as we, we would uh, like or, the, well, as is desired for, for observing. Uh, so we can see here we start with just um, background subtraction which everyone can see now. Background subtraction has its flaws obviously but in this sort of task, we have a moderate control over our environment, and in that case, background subtraction actually can be quite effective for what we want to do. Um, our 3D foot localization then happens through projecting a foreground mask onto ground planes, a fairly well-established technique. And is that playing? Yes, it is. So as the person runs through the scene, we can quite easily detect when and where approximately the feet land on the ground. And we can use the body as well as it moves through to help verify that we're actually getting feet contacts and not just uh, responses on the ground plane caused by some sort of noise. Once we've uh, isolated or well, once we've identified where the, the approximate location of each foot contact is, we refine the foot location just by simply projecting a 3D bounding box back from 3D into each, cam into each camera view and optimizing the location of that bounding box based on foreground information and edge information and such like uh, and trying to, to structure our uh, uh, optimization function such that the foot will, will be guaranteed to be centralized in our, our bounding box. So the end result is that we can sort of uh, close in on, um, on, the f on each individual foot landing on the ground. And what we saw when we look at each individual foot is that the piece of information that tells us the most about, most about the critical landing and taking off times is when the foot uh, is sort of the vertical motion of pieces of the foot. And most specifically, it's the vertical motion of the last part of the foot to leave the ground. So for, for takeoffs, we can track forward through time. And for landings, we can sort of track backwards through time. And to just isolate the vertical motion of parts of individual parts of the feet, what we found most effective was to divide this image into vertical slices, turn those vertical slices into descriptors and track each vertical slice as it goes through the space. And that then allowed us to get results that we could compare against the sort of biomechanics approaches of using force plates and optical motion capture such that we could get contact times to within one frame at 180 frames per second for elite sprinters. So the elite sprinters were really fast and they gave us better information. Um, 
and also our step lengths could then be down to within a centimetre, which was the aims for our biomechanics.